This is the day in the Christian year that we call Good Friday. It is the day that we remember the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. As the people of God, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we, who glory in his death for our salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now hear again the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ as we enter the story today. Peter has already denied Jesus three times. He has been taken by the religious leaders to stand before Pilate. The Jewish leaders 
led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Roman governor's palace. It was early in the morning, so that they could eat the Passover the Jewish leaders wouldn't enter the palace. Entering the palace would have made them ritually impure. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? And they answered, If he had done nothing wrong, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. Pilate responded, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jewish leaders replied, The law doesn't allow us to kill anyone. This was so that Jesus' word might be fulfilled when he indicated how he was going to die. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate asked. After Pilate said this, he returned to the Jewish leaders and said, I find no grounds for any charge against him. You have a custom that I release one prisoner for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? And they shouted, Not this man. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was an outlaw. Then Pilate had Jesus taken and whipped. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. Over and over they went up to him and said, Greetings, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Pilate came out of the palace again and said to the Jewish leaders, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no grounds for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here's the man. When the chief priests and their deputies saw him, they shouted out, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate told them, You take him and crucify him. I don't find any grounds for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders replied, We have a law, and according to this law, he ought to die, because he made himself out to be God's son. When Pilate heard this word, he was even more afraid He went back into the residence and spoke to Jesus. Where are you from? Jesus didn't answer. So Pilate said, You won't speak to me? Don't you know that I have authority to release you and also to crucify you? Jesus replied, You would have no authority over me if it had not been given to you from above. That's why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. From that moment on, Pilate wanted to release Jesus. However, the Jewish leaders cried out, saying, If you release this man, you aren't a friend of the emperor. Anyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he led Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench at the place called Stone Pavement. It was about noon on the preparation day for the Passover. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Here's your king. The Jewish leaders cried out, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Pilate responded, What? Do you want me to crucify your king? We have no king except the emperor, the chief priest answered. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus prisoner. Carrying his cross by himself, he went out to a place called Skull Place. In Aramaic, it means Golgotha. That's where they crucified him, and two others with him, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a public notice written and posted on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of Jews. 
Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Therefore, the Jewish chief priests complained to Pilate, Don't write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I've written, I've written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and his sandals and divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt was seamless, woven as one piece from the top to the bottom. And they said to each other, Let's not tear it. Let's, ca let's cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. That's what the soldiers did. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. After this, knowing that everything was already completed, in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldier soaked it in a sponge and placed it on a hyssop branch and held it to his lips. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, It is completed. Bowing his head, he gave up his life. It was the preparation day, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath especially since that Sabbath was an important day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of those crucified broken and the bodies taken down. Therefore, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who were crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. The one who saw this has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he speaks the truth, and he has testified so that you also can believe. These things happen to fulfill the scripture. They won't break any of his bones, and another scripture says, they will look at him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take away the body of Jesus. Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one because he feared the Jewish authorities. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the one who at first had come to Jesus at night, was there too. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, nearly 75 pounds in all. Following Jewish burial customs, they took Jesus' body and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths. There was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish preparation day and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus in it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us hear now the reproaches Christ lament against his faithless church. O oh my people, O oh my church, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, mighty and holy, immortal one, have mercy upon us. I led you through the desert forty years and fed you with manna. I brought you through times of persecution and of renewal and gave you my body, the bread of heaven but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, but you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I brought you to a land of freedom and prosperity, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. My peace I gave, which the world cannot give, and washed your feet as a servant, but you draw the sword to strike in my name, 
and seek high places in my kingdom. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sakes, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. I sent the spirit of truth to lead you, but you close your hearts to guidance. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I called you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. I prayed that you all may be one, but you continue to quarrel and divide. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters, I was hungry, but you gave me no food. Thirsty, but you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, but you did not visit me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. You are now invited into a time of silence to meditate and offer your prayers before the Lord. Let us close this evening's service by praying the Lord's Prayer together and then spending time in reflection on the sacrifice that Christ has made for our sakes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>